opportunity being here. And as well, I would like to thank Smail for this um, beautiful and outstanding efforts. Um, let's start with a question. Dentist, right? Yes. Okay. How many hours do you practice a day? Beautiful. How many hours do you do a day? How much time do you clinic? Eight hours. Eight hours. How many patients do you see? Minimum uh, fifteen. I'm not from the taxation, by the no, way. No, 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 yeah, okay. Minimum fifteen. Fifteen. Wow. So at the end of the day, what happens to your back? Yeah. Destroyed, right? Yeah. Neck problems, right? Great. So this is what actually we have every day. Since we started practicing, and since we started our practice in the dental clinics, we usually have problems that we start the day and we start to see patients and then we go for direct and then direct vision. Afterwards, time passes for a day, two months, and then after that and after that many times ago. And then, after that all, the nightmare that happens for every dentist, which is back pain, neck problems, and we have some cartridge problems for the neck and the back as well. And then, the solution comes, taking painkillers, starting with painkillers, and that's it. This is what they tell you, you take painkillers and that's it. You go swim, it's okay. But they never said, what is the real thing to do? The real thing to do is to have the perfect posture on your chair, on your dental chair. So you need to sit properly there. In order to have a proper dental treatment, and then as well, not to have this curved back as you can see here in this okay as you can see the curved back which causes all the problems and the neck problems we have all and then once I was talking to a friend he said do you know why we do this we do this in order to see properly so how can we avoid that if we make this thing a little bigger and a little bit more magnified. We can see much better the details behind it. So if we go farther bigger, we can have more details about it. So this is what we need from magnification. Magnification will give us some sort of a better vision of what we're doing. So we don't want to nend our back and see. So the first step was the introduction of everyone knows it and everyone can get it, which is very simple, which are the dental loops. So easily you can buy a dental loop and then you have a better magnification. You don't need to bend that much in order to see your patient's mouth, isn't it? So next, um, but afterwards, after meeting with many, many friends and this socialization that we have in this period, a very good friend of mine was Maxime Bellagrand, and he, he said, look Ia, there is something called dental microscope. Do you know about it? I say, yes, I know about it, but I'm a surgeon. I'm not an endodontist. He said, no, no, wait. Microscopes are not only used for endo. They are used for many other things. Like, for example, preparation, aesthetic, precision, and dentistry. So, after the vote, I was so excited to start my pathway with microscopes. So I said, okay, I will start with a simple microscope. And here it started. And you can see how much vision I have. For example, in this simple apical surgery. But look, the problems that I had. Always, when you look at things and you are so eager for perfection, you always seek for a better result. When you look at this video, wow, we have good quality. But the problem is that I am perfectly focused here, but I'm not focused here, isn't it? I am perfectly with, with good vision here. But once I want to move, I had to get out my hands, put my instruments down, and then start moving my hinge-based microscope, which is something very annoying in surgery. You need something easier. You need something with a simple click that you can do so. You can see now, after I do here, look, the microscope moves a little bit because there is no stop in the joint. So it moves. When I just try to move it, it moves as a whole. So this is something a little bit annoying, especially when you do microsurgeries and when you want to master microsurgery, okay? So what was the solution? 
Anyhow, this is the, this is the um, end of the case. I don't want to discuss it anymore. My solution was is to provide a better and much more easier to use microscope. So one of the solutions that we, I, I've seen, which was, I was astonished with, and it wasn't released, was, was the Provido. It is one of the microscopes that has many, many, many features that we're going to talk about later. You can see it. Uh, the idea is, when you look at microscopes and you want to use it in your practice, which one does this microscope benefit? What, was, what are the benefits? Well, actually, the benefits are that you can easily move your microscope. You can easily take off your hand and it stops. It doesn't move anymore. There is like a break inside it. It doesn't move like, you know, just boom with your head you can move it. No, it stays there, it stops. And as well, it should be easily adapted to our positions. Our positions are not like other surgeons' positions. Dentistry is something else. You should see directly, you should see the indirectly. So you have to see properly. So you should have dental ergonomics. And from here, my journey started with this new type of microscope, which is, by the way, not meant to be for dentistry. Not meant to be for dentistry. It was meant to be for neurosurgeons. It was meant to be more for main GA surgeries. But when you see what your real requirements are, when you step forward and you have another step up and in the level of perfection you want to deliver for your patients, you start seeking for better solutions you want. So if we look at the microscopic vision in a whole, it will change a lot and a lot in your practice. Let's start with how, <coughs> what is so unique about the Provido. Now the Provido has a very special new type of optics called fusion optics and this is called from the two eye two eye pieces one of the eye piece is giving the depth of the field that you want to see and the other one giving you the clear vision so once you apply both together yeah, as if each eye will give the brain okay the vision and then the brain will combine them together you have the perfect vision with a very good depth of view with a very good depth of view. So when you're looking at a point, the point behind it is exactly like in your eyes. So you can see it in a very good focus. So this is one of the things as well, one of the very beautiful things about the microscope. Who has microscopes knows what I'm saying very well. When you get very close to the object, the light never deems, the light never go down. The light is always intense. The light is always right. There is no less light in your surgeries. As well, you can adapt many things to the microscope as any others, but as well, the nice thing about it, in this joystick you have in your microscope, you can move with an X, Y axis your camera so you can see all these things you want to see it when you are in very big magnifications, especially when we're talking about high magnification, okay? So um, this is the Provido. And let's talk more, let's talk more about the parts of the head of the Provido. Now, this is the head of our microscope. And you can see here, if we start looking at what we have in this microscope, these are the eyepieces. The eyepieces are with different designs. You can change between them as long as you want. And as well, the joystick. The joystick which contains the a lot of functions. You can play with the functions, you can change the functions, you can do add, for example, you choose um, one of the functions to be on the types of buttons you have on the, um, on, the, on the joystick. And then the objective lens is from the downstairs. Here we have the light that goes on and we see from. And here, if you need, sometimes you can have some kind of a manual zooming. As well, there is something here which is increasing and decreasing the, um, the, the, the width and the width of the light you have on the, or the spot of light as well. Now, here, let's go back to this point, which is very important, which is the full control of the zooming and focusing. This is what made my life very easy. No more going for steps, tuck, tuck, tuck. no more going for these steps in order to zoom in or zoom out, okay? 
No need to, whenever I move a little bit, I have to take off my hands and go back to the focusing and start focusing a little bit with this kind of any, anything that will, will adjust the focusing. So our manual focusing, everything is motorized, very easy. And you will see later how as well putting some laser to the pointing point you are want to focus on. I have seen a lot of new motorized microscopes and I tried playing on them. The only problem and which one of the most biggest problem I had that I don't know where I'm focusing on because I don't have a, a point that I know I'm focusing on, which is a laser point that is there in the Provedia, for example. So the next one is the electromagnetic brakes. The microscope will never move when you release your hands. Whatever position you put the microscope, it will stay there. And thanks to the ergoden that we have over the head, over the eyepieces, so we can have the, any position we like with a little bit of, you know, some kind of angulation. So the microscope, and we will see it later, can be super angle, angled and the eyepieces are straight. So your posture is always perfectly straight. Now the possibility of changing some functions over here, like for example, adjusting videos, taking photos, increasing, decreasing light intensity, everything is possible in there. And one of the nicest things about Pro Video is the field of view that you have. You have a very wide range from a, as, as close as 225 millimeters and as far as 206, uh, sorry, 600 millimeters. So you have a very big range. You can even work while you're standing. And as well, this, some people don't know why this thing can be beneficial for us. This is beneficial due to one thing which is very important. Our instruments under the microscope, when we use the instruments, when our assistant wants to bring the, when wants to bring the suction, it has some kind of uh, space over the patient so you can use your instruments and the different things that happens over the patient while we're working. So it will not, for example, touch the microscope. She will not, you know, hit the patient with the stuff because you have enough space of working distance there. This is what we were talking about, the fusion optic concept, and what we said that one piece, our one hand piece, everyone has its own thing, and then they are joined together in the brain to give us the perfect image. So let's take a look. Now this is my um, assistant doctor in my clinic. Now she's showing us how she's still straight even though the microscope is tilted, okay? The microscope is still, never moves, even if you put your weight over it, if you put, if some people like to put their eyes on the, on the eyepieces, okay, to put some heavy weight, they, don't, they like to get close, they don't like to be far away. So here you can see that it is angulated and the eyepieces are straight. So, and you can see it from the frontal surface, you can bend the microscope and still your neck is straight. You don't need to, to bend with your microscope. You can see how much efficient this when you're working in the, in the, in the clinic. So, for example, working on another position which is the 9 o'clock position and as well in the 11 o'clock position with just some tilting and as well making the eyepiece straight and as well this is the other angle of the same angulation of the 11 o'clock. Now even with microscope I see some people sitting wrong. Even with microscope I see people not getting the benefit out of microscope. Even with that they're sitting in the wrong posture. This is wrong. And by the way when you sit behind a microscope to start working you should not go so um, stiff because you will have that back pain again. We use microscope in order to have a perfect vision, perfect light, and as well to have a release for our back and make our production for a longer time. This is the other, um, this is the other way we can see that, for example, putting the microscope very far away, this is as well a bad posture that you're not supposed to do while you're doing your thing. Now, the patient position as well. The patient position is something very important 
that we will take care of while doing microscopic dentistry. Microscopic dentistry will give you the um, ability and as well will give you the beauty of making the patient more comfortable as well with more neck support, okay? So you can put the patient in more up position or down position and then you can move and play with your microscope over his head. Now let's go to some cases. What are the real benefits? What did it add to me? For example, this young lady came to change her four anterior teeth for a smile, design and stuff. So we um, agreed on changing the crown, making four laminate veneers as well for her in order to have a perfect color shade matching. And here we can see in this video how can we modify the finishing line of our preparation under the microscope. After putting the retraction cords there, you can see this is what I actually see. Okay, I know that everyone is concentrating over the tooth, but please concentrate here. Look at the mirror, please. Is it in focus or not? This is in focus, and this is in focus. So, this is what's so beautiful about Provido. This is what's so nice and what's so unique about it. So you can see the focus, and all points at the same point with the same with a, with a small distance so it's magnificent now here of course we all know in order to have a perfect finishing line we should do some retraction for the tissues and after doing the retraction for the tissues we can start finishing up our finish line and to see what we have now you can see I'm zooming in more and starting to move my bear and starting to make up my finishing line. This is the quality of vision I want in my clinic. This is the quality of vision I love to have. I dreamed of having, okay? Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the quality you're seeking of is the quality that you're taking care for your patients. So this is what we need to give our patients, quality of work. Look how nicely you can see even the debris of the enamel while you're milling with the tooth. Once I had a friend of mine who asked me, Yad, shall I bring a microscope? I said, are you ready to redo your work? He said, why? I said, when you take an impression and send it to the lab, be sure that you're going to redo the crown for the first five to six times. And then you're going not to do it again. So if you are ready to redo your jobs again, yes, buy a microscope. Look what are you doing. See what are you placing for your patients. The same thing applies here for the lateral. And then after that, this is my finalized preparation. And thanks to my good friend Aham, Charismatic Dental Labs for this beautiful job of ceramics that he did for us. Four beautiful veneers and one crown. You can see here the result of naturality and you can see the perfect adaptation of the crowns over the margins of the tooth. And you can see here from the shadows how you can differentiate between the tooth margin and our veneer. Why? Because we did it properly, we've seen it properly and as well we had the proper magnification to finalize everything. And even while we're looting our crowns, we're looking at what? We're looking at the finish line in a very big, very big magnified area so you can easily handle it. Now, let's go for the other issue. Another case here that I have in surgery as well. So in surgeries, when we look at surgeries, we look at perfection as well. Many people said, yes, it's impossible. Working under microscope for implantology is useless. I say, sorry, it's not useless. I see a lot of details that you can't see. Let's look at details. Let's look at, let's look at the bone quality that we have. Let's look at the levels we have. Now, when you look at this kind of implants, of course, we all know, and it's not our topic for today, but always, when we have the tissues of a thin tissue, we should make our implants a little bit more inside the bone in order to compensate the bone loss that we have. So it's very nice to know how much you are inside your bone here. It's very nice to know how much you're there. So I changed my position and now I'm starting to apply my GBR. 
which is applying some sticky bone with membranes. Always remember that um, in GBR techniques, now we're gonna talk, sorry like uh, guys, I'm gonna talk a little bit surgery here. When we are talking here about having some surgery and some GBR, always try to release a little bit the lingual flaps with you. If you release the lingual flap, you will have a better tensionless closure of your, suture, of your, of your wound. This is much, much better. And as well, if we look very closely of how the implants after their coverage, and then I want to know exactly what will be the size of my membrane that I would love to do. So bring any piece of paper that is sterile. There are hundreds of papers that are sterile. Bring the cover of your sutures that you're going to use, okay? And then try it. Don't ruin your membrane from the first time. Try it first, trim it, shape it, make it ready, and then place it there properly, okay? Look, everything is okay, the length is okay. You check it, you take it, and voila. Now you're ready to introduce your membrane. Now the membrane cut it perfectly to the size we need. Everything we like, and then we can apply it. This is called the periosteal envelope technique of GBR techniques. Now I'm showing you that you can do regular dentistry. Regular dentistry, but without doing like this, without bending your back. You're just sitting, relaxed, hand supported, looking straight forward, and doing all the same procedures that we can do regularly, but without hurting our backs. And as well, with higher magnification and better vision, seeing details. We apply here what's called the sticky bone, the sticky bone technique, which is mixing the, um, the uh, aloe graft with a sort of autogenous bone and as well with the PRF, okay? And then apply it over there. And you can see later, I'm going to cover the whole thing with my membrane. And then after that, placing my PRF and then suture. Now, enjoying such a surgery while you're working is much, much, much different than when you're working with your naked eyes. There's a big difference, guys. Adjust the light, please. No, put the light from here. No, Wherever you're looking, the light is there because you're looking through a lens. This is what's so nice about it. You see, now here, we're applying more the bone graft. And you can see here that we apply more bone graft in the area, and especially around our implant, which is at an extraction socket of the canine over there. We apply the, as you see, the uh, gingival former for that. And then we go for what is called the um, periosteal fixation with sutures for our membrane in order to fix the membrane over there, over the bone graft and the whole area. And then you go fixing the membrane, tie it up, and everything is closed. Your job is done. But at the end of the day, you, sh you should appreciate how much we're looking at now. We should appreciate how much we have of details that are so clear and as well the vision that we have in the help of microscope. So never, I, I, I don't accept the word that says microscopes are not for surgeons. Microscopes are made for surgeons. That's it, this is what I believe. And every time I'm seeking for a new stuff and a new thing that will give me more vision and more light in the area. This is what I want to have. Now you can see here the fixation of the um, sutures, of course. Now, new, new, in the new era of suturing, I love using the PTFE sutures because they are one of the most adapt nicely adapted sutures and as well nicely done things. You can see here now, we are applying the PRF membrane after we did the fixation sutures. This is our PRF membrane. You remember the first video I showed? One side wasn't focused, the other side was not because they were on a little bit different level. You can see here everything is focused. This is the beauty of fusion optics. This is that you can't find in other microscopes, by the way. And you can see here as well that we start now suturing the whole area and the surgery continued with sutures. So, Let's go for another nice thing about microscopes and let's end with this case. A very interesting case 
a 65 years old lady came to my clinic asking me to do for her sinus lifting for an area with a big mucosal. No problem, I can do it. We can take it off and this is what happened. We released a two-sided peri two -sided periosteal split flap because we are going to do for her rebone augmentation for the site. And then afterwards, we are going to do for her the external sinus lift. But as I told you before, she had the mucus cell inside the sinus. We have to take it off before we do our external sinus lifting. Okay? Before. Now this is we starting with piezo. Piezo surgery is one of the safest things that you can take and do while you're doing your surgeries in order not to hurt the periosteal membrane. Now you can see with an elephant foot, which is called the elephant foot uh, piezo, we can do like a, just a release for the we can do release for our membrane from the edges and then the window is free. Of course, I'm gonna leave this window for me. I'm not going to bend it inside because I want to use it somewhere else. So I will use it as we all know, Khuri technique and small cortical plates technique. We're going to take it and reuse it again somewhere else. So this is what happened. Look at the relieving of the piece of bone from the underlying Schneiderian membrane. Look, and then I'm trying to put it in the area we are going to do for a GBR and make our ridge wider in order to place implants. Now, you can see how the membrane is breathing. There is no perforation there, okay? But I want you, I want you to be very um, precise about what we're doing now. Now look here, we went inside, we made a small cut in the Schneiderian membrane, and after that, we splitted the mucus cell from the Schneiderian membrane. We separated them. So this separation will make it very easy for us to take out the mucus, okay, and the mucus cell itself, mucus cell lining. With the help of the suction, you see, I can catch my mucus. You see, I catched it, pulled it out, and then we start pulling it out by releasing it slowly, slowly okay from the underlying or from the Schneiderian membrane over it. you can see that we are releasing the mucus cell lining now our sinus is clean and the big challenge starts now all the surgeons here knows what I'm talking about how to suture the sinus it's very difficult thanks for the new sutures I got and the magnification I have the um, six millimeter needle, a six millimeter needle, and a seven zero suture. I'm using it here to suture the Schneiderian membrane. I'm using it to suture the Schneiderian membrane here. Now, it will be impossible to work with such instruments and give you such options of treatment if you're not working under magnification. It will be impossible. So, you should know exactly the proper instrumentarium and the hardware you should have in order to have your procedure. And here, how can I prove that I have a seal? You can see now again, my membrane is back to life. It's breathing again. So it's 100% closed. You can see, it's moving. Details, this is what we're looking at. This is what we are looking at. And by the way, and by the way, this, what's beauty about as well, Provideo, it has two lamps. It has a xenon lamp and a lead lamp, okay? The xenon is a very, very strong light. Very powerful light, okay? The lead is a very good one, but not like the xenon, okay? This all was taken by the lead light at the intensity of 80% only. So you see how much light and vision we have? And this is only half the light you can get. Half the light that you can see with, and you can see everything with it. And then after that, as I told you, we're going to use this plate as a GBR for us, for a new cortical plate, and then pack with it some bone graft, and then fixing it with some screws, in order to contour what we have missed from bone over there. After that, Putting my other screw inside there, you see the two laser points we have? This is the place that is telling me, look, if these points meet, 
This point is well focused. This is what we mean by these two laser points. We apply as well the membrane and then the PRF in place. Put as many layers as PR on PR on a PRF as you can and then we start suturing with our 7-0 sutures in the releasing part of your flap in order not to leave any scars in the mesial side of our flap. So let's go for a conclusion, sorry, sorry. Let's go for a conclusion. First, in order to avoid any back pains and any kind of stiffness in your neck and avoid using these painkillers, okay, it's much better to change your posture. It's much better to have better magnification for your job and the thing that you're doing. This is number one. Number two, increase the visualization, light intensity on the spot that you're working on. And always remember that your patient comfort will come from an easy way that you're not punishing your patient while he's sitting on the chair. And finally, always look after having the perfect match for your needs of microscopes. For me, the least I can get is Provido. Okay? It is a great microscope. I wish in the future that we might have something bigger. Yes, I need it. I love perfection. But sometimes, just look at your requirements. If you do simple restorations, if you do simple indoors, you don't need that much big microscope to start with. You can start with a simple one. And then after that, you can increase your tactile sensation and your love to the microscope and magnification issue with what? With other advanced, more advanced microscopes. And of course, thanks to Leica, they have all the line. They have from very simple microscopes, examination microscopes, until one of the most sophisticated microscopes in the whole world. Thank you all for being with us. Ready for any answer for questions or something? Thank you so much. Thank you.